All right. Welcome in, everybody. We got a special, you know, Thursday morning episode. We got to get ready. Baseball starts tomorrow. And, you know, I can't think of a better, you know, guest to have than somebody from Campbell University. Lawson, how are we doing this morning? Good. How are you? Man, absolutely stoked. You know, tomorrow, me and my son are going to be catching a flight out. We're heading to your place. Never been there before. Your fan base absolutely rocks. I can't wait to get out there. Like, we got all the swag ready we got from Coach Hare. Um, man, it, it tomorrow can't get here soon enough. But before we do that, you know, we got to get your story and, uh, you know, let the let the IOTB fan base get a idea and a feel of who the lawman is. So, you know, before we before we jump into your complete story, I got to ask, man, Coach Hare, speaking of tomorrow, I have the text message December 15th. He told me if I chose to come to Campbell opening weekend, it would be 60 and sunny. Well, it's going to be 60 and sunny. So I ask you, is there anything Coach Hare can't do? <laughs> no, not that much he can't do. You know, he keeps us going pretty straight on the straight and narrow. I mean, to nail the weather like that, I mean, especially this time of year, you don't never get 60 and sunny. And I was like, this man told me if I came, we would get good weather. And we did. So it ends up being the right decision. So, um, Pretty stoked about that because around here it could be pretty miserable. I remember three years ago I got ice and snowed in, couldn't even go to the college baseball showdown in Arlington because couldn't get out of here to get there. So uh, completely different feel this year. But um, let's talk about music real quick, man. Music's a hot topic right now, especially coming off the Super Bowl. Everybody's talking about different things. Who is your go-to musician right now? Oh, uh, I would say I listen to mostly let's think. Listen to a lot of Luke Combs and a lot of uh, Morgan Wallen. Morgan Wallen is a pretty popular choice amongst baseball players on this show, so I feel like he's doing right. If if you got everybody listening to you, um, yeah, you're you're killing the game. So favorite athlete right now. Speaking of Super Bowl, and obviously that doesn't mean football. Professional athlete, if they're on TV, there's somebody you're going to turn on and watch because they're just must see TV. Well, I would say just because of today, it's Tiger Woods. Oh, you have to fill me in. I haven't seen what what happened today with Tiger. Oh, he play, well, he just plays today, and he ain't played in a long time. And, like, every time he plays, I enjoy to click it on and watch, just see what he's up to. Yeah, they were talking about him, and that may have been why they were having this discussion on the radio yesterday morning. They were talking about how when it comes to golf, like, you know, other sports, there's real debates on who the best is. And it seems in golf, like, people used to – argue Jack Nicholas and Tiger, but really nobody does anymore. It's just Tiger and nobody really spends time arguing. You know, do you feel that way? Like there's not even a discussion to be had. Yeah. You know, just like, he's just the guy that we grew up with, you know, it's kind of like, uh, same thing with Tom Brady. Like everybody, nobody really debates who's the best quarterback right now, other than the fact Patrick Mahomes just won the Super Bowl. They're trying, but- they're trying to push him into that conversation. It's way too early. Yeah, but I would say, like, yeah, Tiger and Brady the same way. We just grew up on them, and, you know, we just think they're the best we've ever seen. Yeah, uh, I always equate the best is the guy that I like or dislike the most because – and I say that because that means they got in the way of my team winning championships. So, for, like, in basketball, right, you know, Kobe, I always hated Kobe because as somebody who rooted – For Memphis and OKC, like, he always got in the way, right? And, you know, it's that way with Patrick Mahomes right now. Like, and so, and and Brady, of course. So, I think the the greats are always the team that stops your team from winning it unless you get lucky and it is your team. But my team is never the team that that wins it every year. So, not not that lucky. Um, But let's get into your story, man. Where are you from? I'm from Shelby, North Carolina, just about an hour west of Charlotte. Gotcha, gotcha. And is that a, like a real small town? Yeah, it's smaller. You know, uh, you ever heard of Gardner Webb? Yeah. So Gardner Webb is in Bowling Springs, which is about 15 minutes away. Yeah, that's interesting because obviously, you know, doing the notes for this episode, we're going to talk here in a little bit. You know, you, you're you basically from around Gardner Webb, it seems like, and, you know, you had some big moments against them. So uh, might might have all correlated, but Talking about your family, you know, I seeing some research, seeing, you know, you got a big family, got some siblings. Talk about it. Yeah, I got uh, two sisters, one older, one younger. The younger one, she's going to Virginia Tech right now to study engineering. Then the older one, she is a nurse. Man, engineering at Virginia Tech. So she's smarter than you, huh? Oh, yeah, she's smarter than me. <laughs> 
which I mean, hey, you're a guy that's on honor roll every year. So that's, hey, that's, that's give and do. But, you know, engineering ain't no easy field. No. Uh, but, uh, you know, growing up, you know, you have this family, you have sisters, you know, you're into sports. Who would you say is your biggest inspiration? Was it somebody within your family? Was it a coach? Was it an athlete you tried to emulate? Who, you know, who was your inspiration? Yeah, I'd just say it was my dad and my grandfather. Like, they always pushed me and, like, took me everywhere that I needed to go. Uh, sometimes, you know, my dad would have to go to work, and then my grandpa would pick me up from one practice to take me to the next practice the same time at night, bring me dinner and stuff like that. And that really just uh, pushed me because you saw all they did for me that you just got to leave your best out there. Yeah, absolutely. I love, you know, it seems like such a simple story, but not everybody does have the luxury of having – you know, dads and granddads who are able to pour in the time. And so I love hearing that it's the family and that you have a tight knit family. Um, it's not something that we actually hear on here all the time, surprisingly. And um, so that's cool for you. And, you know, coming up, I assume you played travel ball. You know, you can't get to this level usually unless you play travel ball. Were you in the travel ball scene in North Carolina? Yeah. So what's the thing I played? So Shelby is like a big Legion baseball town. So, you know, uh, they have the Legion World Series is based out of Shelby. So for my first couple of years, I always played Legion in high school and then finally got in my junior year. And uh, they were like, look, you might need to go play some showcase baseball to like get looked at. And I was like, OK. So then I went and played. I played five tournaments with the Dirtbags out of uh, North Carolina. And that's when I got all my offers and got recruited. The Dirtbags is that's a team. Uh, I'm trying to think. Who just said they were on that team? Did you play with anybody uh, that's playing college ball right now that, that you were on the dirt bags with? Who's playing college baseball still? No, but I play with a lot of guys that got drafted. I may have been in. I know somebody said because I told them I love that name. Like, you can't go wrong with that. Is well, I know, I know Dalen, Dalen played for the dirt bags too, but he was just years past me. Yeah, that might have been what it was because Dalen was, was recent. Because, uh, like I said, man – um, sign me up for the team name Dirt Bags. I will rep that jersey all day. Um, but outside of travel ball, where'd you go to high school? I went to a Crest High School. Oh, uh, we were good. Yeah, I seen that, and you were good. I have only seen we have had um over two hundred baseball players on this show, and I want to say I don't have it definitively. I want to say you have the second highest batting average, and I will tell you just like I told. Them, um, 568, bro, is insane. I don't care, you know, if – because you just said you y'all were good and, you know, I don't know the talent level, but I don't care if you're playing, you know, the worst talent. The hit 568 in the game of baseball is unreal. And, you know, 3A NCHSAA All-State Team, Prep Baseball Report All-State Team, you know, named the 2019 Conference Player of the Year, you know, just, I mean, how much of a blast was high school putting up numbers like that, playing for a good team like that? Oh, uh, it was great. You know, uh, my best friend from high school back then that I played ball with, his name was C.J. Mayhew, he ended up going to ECU, got picked up by the Angels a couple of years ago, and, you know, we just really were close together, and we, uh, we just were good, and we just kept it going, and, you know, it was really fun playing with all those guys. So at what point do you start getting uh, reached out to by colleges through that process? You know, was it one of those things that was real early in high school or later on? No, I was later. So it was one of those things where I played Legion and basically nobody ever came to like watch those games. And then I played, uh, I actually, it was my first, I did a trial with the dirt bags. And back then I threw, I was a pitcher too. And so I threw 91 in a bullpen as a junior in high school, and they sent it out to a bunch of uh, schools. And that was when I first started getting calls. So you start getting calls. You know, you're from North Carolina was, you know, playing for a local school, especially with the colleges that are in North Carolina, obviously, you know, the best state in the country when it comes to, to colleges to choose from. Was it something that you wanted to stay close to home? No, it was literally just I'll go wherever, whoever gave me an offer. It wasn't like a big, uh, you know, cluster of teams coming in. I was just – I got an offer, and that's where I went. So it was that simple with Campbell? Was it – it was that you got the offer, or was there something about Campbell that, like, really excited you? Well, I would say it was the official uh, – when I went on my – well, I guess it was unofficial visit, just like the way that they took you around campus, and then Coach Hare and the staff really could lay out what their plan was for you and like your role, what your role was going to be for the team. 
and what they wanted you to become, even though you might not have been ready for it yet. And uh, that was really good selling point. I feel like the plan is, I right, look, we are going to score a lot of runs. Are you are you okay with that? Yeah, man, coach, sign me up. Like, because that's what Campbell does, man. Um, offensively, are a juggernaut every year, and I love it. They, I mean, it's, it's great baseball over there in Bowie's Creek. And so, let's talk about your time there. Freshman year, obviously, you know, COVID. You know, not much to talk about because y'all only played for so long. But you know, I mentioned the honor roll thing. You know, you did make honor roll that first year, and you did get your feet wet and play some games. What would you say, just from a very short year, that you were able to take most out of twenty twenty? Well, just kind of how to slow the game down a little bit. I would say freshman year, I was really sped up when I got into games, and it was one of those things where after that, it was easier to slow the uh, game down and you know just control your emotions and control everything. Yeah, no doubt, and. I never take it for granted talking to the guys, um, especially, you know, if it's a lack of games or it's a red shirt year, you know, there's always something to be learned, especially in the game of baseball. So you're able to take whatever you can, even in a COVID shortened season. You know, even we talk about academically, you know, getting in the classroom, getting acclimated. So um, I know COVID was probably a major bummer, but nonetheless, it got you started on the career that you are having now. And so second year, man, you play in 44 games. I pick a stat out because when we have a long career like yours, we obviously can't just completely go through every season. We'll be here all day. And so the thing I wanted to pick out, man, you play in 44 games and you only make one error in the outfield. And so I asked, is that one error something that really bothered you or because you were sharp all year, you just kind of shrugged it off? You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even remember that error that year. And I honestly, I, I do remember getting it and I was mad about it because I didn't think it was an error. <laughs> it was i didn't know they like, said you couldn't be perfect we got to give you something yeah, well no i just didn't think it was an error it was like i bobbled a ball or something and i didn't throw the guy out at third i can't remember and they gave me an error for it and i'm like well the guy just hit the ball 110 <laughs> like, you're not just going to catch everything clean and right. then they're sitting around they gave me an error for it i do remember that i was like i don't know how i got an error for that you know in the outfield is this something you take pride in and i ask because you know we had vance study cut on recently and it was interesting because he was a guy who plays shortstop. And then because he, like he said, he literally came in here and said, I sucked. So coach threw me to the outfield. Now he's a reigning defensive player of the year. He takes a lot of pride in what he does in the outfield. Is it one of those things that, man, you take a lot of pride when you're out there defensively? Yeah, I do. You know, I don't want to all, you know, it's hard to get outs in baseball. And a lot of times, like, you know, we can't sit around and give them away. And I feel for like pitchers when guys make errors and everything. So really it's not about, like me being good and showing off me, I just want to get that pitcher off the mound as quick as possible. Absolutely, no doubt. And so, you know, getting into the next year where we can get a little more substance, you know, 2021 was pretty significant. And the reason is, is that's the year we really started covering baseball. And our main place that we covered out of, because I'm in North Mississippi, was we're in Starkville all the time. My son's a Mississippi State fan. And, you know, y'all have an amazing year and come to the Starkville Regional. And if there's anything I've noticed in the last three years, y'all are Mississippi State's second favorite team. <laughs> after that, after that year, they are all about the Camels. It's roll humps. Um, so talk to me about that environment, because you're talking about the Mecca of college baseball. Talk to me about like, I don't know, just how did this come to be that, you know, not often does a team go and, you know, lose in the postseason, but, like, these two teams, like, become, like, family with one another. I would say, you know, the atmosphere was the most electric place I've ever been to. Uh, and then I would say it more is to the parents and everybody up in the stands. It seemed like every parent they talked to said, this is the nicest away fans we have ever met in our lives. And they just talked about how great of a time they had because of how great host Mississippi State fans were to them. And then how everybody just made friends. And, how was that uh, food? Oh, it was incredible. And then, you know, they, they, them fans, they knew baseball. They didn't start chanting when it didn't matter. They always knew the counts and what was going on. And that was really an eye opener to me because I've never been around fans that really truly knew, you know, when to start, you know, chanting about stuff and everything based on the count and based on what's actually going on in the game. Yeah. It's, it's such an, like you said, it's an electric atmosphere, but it's, there's so much good about it. Like, 
I have trouble, like, because you can go out in the left field lounge and ha- and hang out with those guys, you know, Lounge and Jeffrey and all them, the Lizards, and eat and have fun. But, like, I also like to be, you know, back behind home plate. But then there's a section on the third baseline that's exactly who you're talking about. They do the chants and everything, the maroon and white. And it's like there's no bad place to be, but you can't be every place at once. Um, but it, it's an awesome group of people. And like I said, they um, – and I think y'all have gave them something because we talked about last season – you know, they just, you know, obviously struggled after the championship. And it feels like, or the last really two years, they gave them something to root for. You know, they became Campbell fans when it got to the postseason. So it was pretty cool to see that happen. And I'm hoping they get back on track this year because I think you would agree, even coming from Campbell, that um, them being good is good for baseball, especially with that environment. You know, you'd like to see them hosting in a postseason again this year. Yeah, exactly. I feel bad for people that haven't got the uh, opportunity to experience it. You know, you're not going to see a better atmosphere than that in college baseball. And I, uh, when they were on top, I think that was the best baseball was. Yeah, no doubt. And so the next year, we talked about Gardner Webb earlier. You know, you had a massive walk off that kept the season alive in the Big South tournament. Being a guy, you know, that's from that area, getting that, you know, that walk off. What was that moment like for you? Uh, you know, it was uh it was it was good, but at the same time there was one out and uh Coach Hare came up to me, a guy on third, and he said, Oh, you want a safety here? And I said, No, we have the best hitter in the country behind me, Zach Neto. I don't want a safety. And he was like, Okay. And he let me swing. And then uh, you know, just put it out there. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, I wasn't even gonna bring him up, but since you brought up his name, I wasn't trying to let him steal the shine of your episode. It is crazy how fast Neto – you just don't see guys shoot up the ranks of the MLB the way he did. It just really speaks to how good he is. They they don't just do that. Like, he's not some fluke. It, it is wild how good he is and how fast he, he was able to make it to the MLB. Oh, yeah. No, he's a great player. Um, and I've seen the videos like uh, he comes back, you know, it's one of those things, you know, he didn't he didn't get big and just forget he was a Campbell or a camel the next season, you know. He's been back, you know, he shares everything from y'all because he's active on social media. So you love you love to see it. And, you know, I think it helps build y'all's program, you know, uh, for those coming in saying, hey, you know, I talked about how y'all do offensively. But you say to a guy, like, you come here, not only can you have a chance at, you know, winning the conference, going to Omaha, but, hey, we make MLB players. So come, why not come here? Come to the creek. And so last year is where I really want to get in. Obviously, we've kind of like just a little bit in each area. But last year, the big year, you know, your Big South Player of the Year uh, earned four different All-American teams, appeared in 58 games, 58 starts, led the Big South in RBIs and slugging percentage, placed in the top three in nine different categories, slash 371, 475, 70, 761 with 22 home runs and 69 RBIs. Was this one of the things that was – you know, was something different or was this just a culmination of all the hard work that you had put in in the previous years coming into last year? I would say, you know, it was like the experience from the years before on the mental side. And then I made just subtle swing adjustments with our hitting coach. And then everything just uh, ended up turning out great. Yeah. And I mean, the, the team, it was just, I mean, runs and the fact that you were in the middle of all that, um, Y'all were y'all were so much fun to watch. You know, y'all go 46 and 15, absolute juggernaut. And, you know, I went nuts on social media when y'all did not end up hosting. You know, how did you feel like was it one of those all business, you know what, I'll play anywhere? Or did it kind of leave a bitter taste in your mouth that they did not pick y'all to host? Especially we talk about your fan base and just how passionate they are and how not only did y'all as a team deserve it, but, you know, as a fan base, they deserve to be able to have that. No, I mean, it was more like a whatever for me. I was like, I'll go play wherever you want us to play. You know, I played in the Mississippi State Regional. They won the Natty. Went to uh, played in the Tennessee Regional the next year. They're number one team in the country, you know. They were like one of the best uh, college baseball teams ever. I was like, well, you send us wherever. We're ready to go. Yeah, no, that was the thing. Uh, my co-host, Randy, he is a Tennessee fan, and when you go back to that year when they were looking at the region, he goes, you know, Campbell, man, hey, that that's a team that, you know, is getting looked over in our region. He said, I'm not excited about them being here at all. And then we talked to the South Carolina guys last year. It's the same thing. 
if you talk to the players around the country, they respect y'all. Like there may be some fan bases that maybe don't recognize how talented y'all are. You know, y'all might have got overlooked for for hosting, but the players who matter the most on the other teams know what y'all bring to the table. And y'all are not a team that they want to see in their region. But ultimately, you don't get to host. You do have to go to Columbia. Um, y'all take care of business with NC State and Central Connecticut State. You know, how good do y'all feel going into that South Carolina game? Because like you said, um, you're used to it. You're not scared of anybody. You've taken care of the other two teams. You know, how how ready were y'all for that matchup in their house? You know, we felt good about it going into it. I mean, we uh, I think we hit a bomb in the first inning or second inning or something, went up to zip. We're like, ah, oh, we're here. You know, we're just, just a regular old ball game. And then I don't know, uh, I think it was the second time through the order, they got on our guys. And, I mean, they started playing ping pong with the wall. And, I mean, I don't know. That was just what happened. It was just like, well, they are smashing it. Yeah, obviously nothing to take personally, even for your pitching staff, because South Carolina could absolutely rake. Really, the only reason um, they got done the way they did by Florida was just injuries in the pitching staff just oh, you know, took over. They they could only do so much, but that South Carolina team could could ball, and they're a team that, man, that batting order is returning this year. They're going to be scary. Oh, they're going to be good this year. Yeah, no doubt. So, you know, the season doesn't end the way you want it to, but it feels like, you know, each year y'all are right on the cusp of um, knocking on the door to Omaha. Y'all are always competitive and a contender. Um, this year y'all hit the transfer portal real hard. Y'all got some, um, you know, awesome young freshmen coming in. You know, this fall, just how good have you felt about what you've seen from the team, especially as a leader of this team? Well, I mean, I feel good about it. We got great. I mean, I think overall this is the best group of just pure athletes that we've ever had here. Everybody's fast. Everybody's strong. I guess good to see, you know, and then now we're just putting the baseball aspect together for them, and then we're going to be ready to go. Yeah, no doubt, and and that's what I'm excited to see. You know, I, I said something to you right at the, the start of this show and, and right before – you know, opening weekend, y'all get to host UCSB. And, and this is going to be a common theme for y'all, right, all, all year, especially your midweeks. Um, y'all definitely have the teams, you know, per the rankings, you know, whatever you want to put into preseason rankings. Um, y'all have, you know, eight or nine ranked matchups. And you start off the season with what I feel like is the biggest weekend matchup when you look at it, you know, with how good y'all and talented y'all are having UCSB come to y'all. So just how excited are y'all to start the season, you know, being able to prove something right out the gate and test yourselves. You know, you even said to me before the show, it wasn't going to be easy. You know, how excited are you to test this team early? Yeah, we're excited to see, you know, where we stack up. You know, they got a great team and, you know, we're just going to use it as a measuring stick, see where we're at. So now that the starting rotation has been named, uh, this is the last question I got for you and then we'll play a game. You know, talk to me about that starting rotation and, and how good you feel about them for those who maybe because, you know, our listening audience maybe may not know so much about Campbell. Talk about that starting uh, rotation now that they've named it. Oh, uh, you know, they're electric. You know, Derek's really good. He's got a uh, he's got uh, I don't even know how many pitches. It seems like he throws me a new one every day. I can't keep up with how many pitches he throws, but he's got good stuff. He's going to uh, pound the zone, you know, try to get out. Sabres, same thing. He's got a uh, great stuff, sinker guy. Uh, and then Cooper, you know, he's a freshman. He's a stud. He's thrown great all fall, all spring. You know, guy's a stud. You know, he could be a – he's probably going to be freshman of the year. If, but, yeah, that's my opinion. Yeah, I, lo I love a good freshman coming in because people make an assumption that, you know, that whole freshman label, and then you don't really know much about them, don't have the scouting report. They haven't seen what you've seen all fall, and they come in there and electrify people. So I feel like especially on a on a Sunday game, that could be one that sneaks up on anybody, but I'm excited to see it. Uh, like I said, heading out there, um, going to be me and my son's first experience. Um, you know, man, hope that it's a, a great competitive series, but nonetheless, hope y'all absolutely take care of business. That way um, I can talk smack on Twitter and be like, yeah, I'm the only one that had Campbell in the top 25 and clearly I had it right. So I like being right. Um, but with that, man, let's get into a game and I'll let you get out of here. It's called this or that it's simple. I give you two options. You choose one or the other. Can't say both, can't say neither. You down to play? Yep. All right. This or that is brought to you by our sponsor, Chinook Cedary. Eight flavors, mild to wild. Lawson, have you had Chinook Cedary? Yeah, I have. What is your favorite flavor of seed? Oh, I can't remember. We had one the other day that was really good. I can't remember. It might have been like Buffalo Ranch or something. I can't remember. Jalapeno exactly. Ranch? 
Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was, Jalapeno Ranch. Well, I'm going to tell the Campbell fan base that happens to listen to this episode, there's going to be an 11-year-old. He's going to have on, depending on the day, but he'll have on either the uh, uh, the sunflower or the spit and seeds, that's what I look for, the, the spit and seeds hat, or he'll have the floppy hat that he got sent from uh, Campbell, and he'll be running around and he'll have a box of seeds and – he does it in every game. It's one of his favorite things to do, Lawson. Uh, no matter where we're at, he'll go give out seeds for free. So it's <laughs> the best deal you can get. He's got the different flavors, and he has the pitch and everything that he does um, for Chinook. Uh, he's he's got it down, and it's one of those things that he just likes to to advertise. Brandon um, from Chinook was like, "Man, he's a walking advertisement." And I was like, "He loves it, man. He likes to go out there." And so try not to let him give away all the product, but you know, I give him a couple boxes each place we go to. Let him go pass them out. Um, get the fans. So if you happen to see that kid, hey, go ask him. There's eight different flavors. Uh, get them before he runs out. But with this game, here we go. First one, chicken or beef tacos? Chicken. Liquid or bar soap? Bar. Man, that's what I'm talking about. You're only like the fifth one. I have I put this question on here because I inform everybody that if you use liquid soap, it really only cleans about 50% of your hands. So the fact that you use bar soap tells me you're a clean person, Lawson. I dig it. All right. Orange or black uniforms? And this may be the hardest question you have because both are black bad. uniforms. How do you feel about the new ones that were released? And, and I asked because on Twitter, they the fans talked about how the camel is no longer on the sea. So while the uniforms are absolutely beautiful, you know, they hate not having the best logo in baseball on them. Yeah, you know, they rebranded it, but uh, I, I do miss the old logo a little bit compared to the new one. But, I mean, I think they look good. Yeah, now you can't you can't go wrong with them. And I actually showed a picture, and you may or may not be familiar. They look just like the OKC uh, ones that they had, the Sunset uh, uh what do you call them the city edition anyway the the orange and black is exactly the same it looks just like uh those the c even looks like the way their okc was um so i actually am a fan of them because like i told you at the start of this episode i had root for okc in basketball so i'm a big fan of it um this question was brought because the wake forest guys and their teletubbies picture so it's going to seem weird but are you about going to a costume party or a pool party Oh, probably a costume party. All right. If you and the boys go, what are you going as? You're not going as Teletubbies, right? Like Wake Forest can play baseball, but that's a little weird. No, no, probably not. Oh, uh, I don't know what we go as. Probably like we come up with a good TV show or something, you know, just all go as a, uh, you know, whatever the show was or something. Yeah, my daughter has gotten on a Walking Dead kick and has me watching it with her because I've always made fun of it. It's like, I ain't got time for those zombie shows. Anyway, she did say it'd be cool if the whole family of the four of us were just like zombies and went all out. And I was like, I actually could, I could get down with that. Yeah, we'd do like a Blue Mountain State or something. <laughs> all right. Would you rather be lost in a jungle or trapped in a haunted house? Lost in the jungle. You know the tigers and the snakes ain't caged there, man. That's all right. I'd rather just be. <laughs> There's no right answer. This this question changes uh, episode to episode, season to season. Uh, the other one is: Would you rather uh, get in a fight with a bear or a tiger? And there's no good option. Just like the jungle or a haunted house, there's no good option. I think I'm taking the bear. Yeah, I'm definitely with the bear because. They like said you're not going to win either, but it just feels like even they they run 35 miles per hour, and it says that right. But I'm going to need to see it. I feel like I have a chance to outrun in this thing. Um, the tiger, you're not getting away from, and you like people, he's too quick, and you can't even like climb a tree to get away from a tiger. They do that effortless. They'll do it better than you. Yeah, exactly. All right, private yacht or private jet? Ooh, yacht. I agree. You like to fish? Yep. No doubt. All right, last one. This is the big question. Would you rather be the first pick in the MLB draft, which, as we say, to add to it, you know, caveat, we had Paul Skeens on here and talk about it, basically talking about a $10 million signing bonus. So first pick, $10 million, or win a national championship. What are you doing? Ooh. 
That's hard. I win a natty. Yeah, I used to argue and say I'd really have $10 million, but I just referenced Skeens. After he came on here and said he would give the first pick and the, and the money back and keep his natty, how can I argue a guy who actually has done that? So yeah, I got nothing. Right. I used to say give me $10 million all day, but now I can't. All right. Well, before I cut you loose, man, is there anything you want to plug or promote? Do you have any NIL things going on, nonprofit things? Or, uh, you know, if not, man, at least plug your social media, even if you're not very active on it, just so they can see what you got going on. No, nah, I ain't got anything for NIL or anything. But, uh, you know, on Instagram, I'm uh, Lawson Harold 15 Look it All up. right. Well, y'all check him out. Obviously, follow Camels BSB. Uh, Man, they're really good at, at, on Instagram of sharing everything, keeping you up to date, making sure you can see um, the highlights of the team, keeping up to date with who's going to be throwing on the weekend. Um, but Lawson, man, I appreciate your time and, man, look forward to this weekend. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Absolutely. That's Lawson Harrell, everybody. If you like hearing his story or you just like hearing Average Joe's talk X's and O's, please like and share the podcast on Facebook, retweet us on Twitter, listen and subscribe on Apple, Spotify, and Anchor. As always, ratings, comments, hugs, love, feedback, all that good stuff is welcome. We will see everyone back here in about an hour. We got our man Curtis Byrne on. We had to reschedule him as well. It's crazy. We got daytime episodes left and right. But in the meantime, remember, strong bodies, sharp minds, grit and grind all the time. We are out.